Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and potentially girls, if there are some sisters out there as well. Welcome to Toowoomba Grammar School. My name is Scott Campbell. I'm the head of the junior school, um, which is different titles in different schools, but primary school principal. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if I can just ask um, for efficiency's sake, a couple of things. First one is if you could turn your microphones off um, and we'll get to questions during the tour, but if you could start with them off and also cameras as well. Um, if we have any technical issues um, during the course of what's happening today, um, you will receive some an email correspondence from the school just to let you know what's happening. Um, but with the test run last week, things went well. All right, that bell going that possibly you can hear in the background is the 11 o'clock bell, and that means children across our schools are the children who are here going into class. Now, it's my pleasure to show you around today. Um, some of the facilities, you'll see children working in classrooms, so children of adventure workers, and you'll also see children um, online uh, working as well on some of the screens in some of the rooms. All right, before I start showing you facilities, I want to talk about our school and our values proposition. Really important to know. So you'll see some glorious stuff today, some great teachers, children online here at school, um, beautiful facilities and on a lovely day in Toowoomba. But you need to know about our values. Um, the school is an all boys school, prep to year 12, 1200 boys across the school. And we pride ourselves in being specialist educators of boys and understanding boys across those age ranges. Um, our values proposition in the junior school is very fundamental. It's straightforward and it's articulated very clearly to parents, to our staff and to children as well. So they all hear the message. So three tiers, we talk about the first one, which is pastoral care, looking after children to the very best of our ability. And for us, that means understanding boys. Um, Excellent, outstanding, wonderful communication with parents. We're getting a sample of that today. And within the pastoral care package, looking after children is a values or a, a character building program. And I won't go right through that at the moment, but the fundamental one um, is R in the acronym we use, R for respect. And what that means for boys, and they are taught this explicitly by a tailored program, respect for self, respect for others, respect for adults, and very importantly for a boys' school, respect for women. So that can be sisters, mothers, female teachers, and the broader society. The second tier in the values um, push statement proposition is the academic program. And we're very clear on that with the boys as well, that we talk about the academic program being the reason a school exists. Within that, learning to read and learning to read, I'm sorry, and learning to love reading above all else. And put those two building blocks of education together, you make children powerful for life. And then the third part, or the third tier, all those other wonderful things you get to do at our glorious school. So that could be um, any one of a number of sports, playing a musical instrument in an ensemble, singing, chess, debating, drama, and so on, and all of those things of equal value. All right, behind me, um, we're not going in there today, but is the sports centre and, and also the the gym that existed before the sports centre, our indoor sporting facilities. Possibly a strange place for us to be starting the tour, but geographically this will make sense to you as we then move to the junior school and through the junior school, and we'll save some efficiency um, with our tour as well. All right, behind me, and Matthew, who's behind the camera, you probably won't see this today if things go according to plan, but he is going to be tracking it as well. Matthew is following me into the aquatic centre. So this is the, uh, the PB Hawser Aquatic Centre, named after our current headmaster and the Glen McCracken Sports Centre behind us. So an indoor sporting precinct. Um, the Learn to Swim pool at the moment is empty and obviously there's no swimming in, in Australia and probably much more broadly as well with coronavirus. We come through here and we'll see the main pool as well. So as I said, it's sort of an unusual place to start. It's based on geography and efficiency. So I'll just give you a snapshot of this and then we'll go down to the junior school and start on you know, the, the bread and butter of our offerings. Uh, the aquatic centre is open in normal times from about 5.30 in the morning till 7 at night. Um, boys across our school use it and the learn to swim pool, the important thing, if you're a, a parent of a potentially a boy at our school from prep to year three, what you have as part of your package is a learn to swim lesson once a week, all year round for four years. That is the one thing we can guarantee is going to save lives in the future. So teaching boys to swim as part of their normal school experience with school staff. All right, we'll wander down 
the junior school, which is quite literally down. We're going down some stairs and through. And while we're doing that, I'll just talk a little bit about um, the school history. So I'm not doing that while I'm in a classroom as well. Right, our, our school was founded in 1875. Um, it's on the same block of land as it was originally established. So 20.5 hectares or 50 acres. And when it was established in its current location, which is all of about two minutes from the center of Toowoomba, um, boys could ride their horses to school. They could bring their rifles to school as well. Of the percentage of boys, so 44 boys originally on this block of land, and about a quarter of those were junior school boys or primary school age. And that is still the ratio as it stands now um, amongst our schools. Um, over time, the junior school has been part of the school. It has come and gone a couple of times um, in, in decades past, but it is very well established and here to stay in our current times. 280 boys currently in the junior school, and that's from prep to year six. So prep's the equivalent to kindergarten in New South Wales. And it looks predominantly like two classes per grade uh, from prep to year six. Um, not unusual to have three classes in year six or year five. And nearly all those boys are day boys, small number of boarders. Boarders can start from year five. All right, welcome to our junior school environment. So we've got two levels in our building and two side wings as well. So where we're going at the moment is past or along the top floor and we have our learning support room and then we go year four up to year six. And if Matt gives you a peer in the door, you'll see some year four boys who are here at school and they're in the middle of an online lesson. So also boys at home as well. Hello, Jackson. Hello, Isaac. <laughs> All right, I think the thing to note at the moment, All right, we're going past another year four class as well. The thing to note at the moment is that the boys are wearing what we call gold. So that's their sports gear. And we've made a, a very deliberate decision with this. Sorry, I'll let you peer through the window as well as Mrs. Gomez's class too. Much more interesting than looking at my face. So some year four boys there looking very serious. Good morning, Emmett. Uh, the boys, as I said, the boys are wearing their sports uniform. And we've taken that deliberate decision over what we anticipated was the first five weeks of this term. With boys coming to school, it's still school uniform. It's functional, so we'll come back this way. I've got boys looking while I'm talking with no audience. So there's Mr. Staines year five room. Ethan is sitting closest to us, and Mr. Staines is waving at you. You can see the boys doing their work, plus also the boys who are at home doing their online learning as well. Morning, boys. Uh, uniform, uh, comfortable, still in uniform, relaxed, but formal enough for the current circumstances. That's been well received by parents as well as the boys too. All right, just do a quick sweep around of what you're seeing out here. So um, you can see a crest probably up in the background, which is the sports center, aquatic center from where we come and through the junior school playground. And these areas here, uh, one end of prep and year one will play, a sand pit behind us um, and some playground equipment years two and year three, handball courts, football field. And then I will show you where the year four five and six boys play on one of our main ovals and through the jacaranda glade. So we spread out geographically for the boys. All right, um, one of the things that we've factored in for this is that parents um, and children can ask questions during this tour. So if you'd like to ask a question as we're going along, um, by all means, if you could just identify yourself or introduce yourself. And, and then I'll endeavor to do that as we're going around, obviously in and out as well. Anyway, we welcome questions. and. Obviously, as I said, from the children too. You'll just have to unmute um, as you're asking them. Right, we're now passing year five classes, so two year five classes, and then up past the year six classrooms as well. I'm going in to visit Mr. Jeffrey's year six class, which is the next on our left. Good morning, boys. How are you all doing? 
Oh, is that morning, Xavier? Morning, Ruben. Morning. Oh, there we got some face on the screen. Morning, Harry. Morning, Sam. Morning, Cooper. How are you going? <laughs> All right. Morning, Ruben. Morning, Mark. Morning, Ash. Morning, Liam. Morning, Aaron. Morning, Matt. And good morning, Jed. All right, boys, sit back down. All right, for the parents at home, um, rather than interviewing, what I'm going to to ask is I'll have a chat with Mr. Jeffries and just convey what he's doing. You'd be able to see up on the interactive whiteboard number of boys, okay, Ruben, sorry, Sanjo's there as well, um, who are working from home and then the boys who are working here from school. And you can see that some of the furniture in here too is a, has been a trial, part of a pilot project of more flexible seating. Um, and I know that the boys have given me feedback often enough, so I'm quite enjoying it. So. Right, Mr. Jeffries, what lesson are you in in the middle? Um, we are just about to start our literacy for staff. Okay. Um, where we're looking at uh, jacking up paragraphs and putting them in the right order. Um, okay. So we're looking at what we've got. All right. So working with English um, in a particular program um, that or approach to English that we've been working with for the past year and a half, uh, VCOP oh, yeah. and Big Right, which has had some very good results and improves the boys quality and it gives them great structure to work on as well all right they're all waiting for me to leave i'm thinking so they can keep going with what they're doing i'm going to do just pop it up on the screen okay wonderful all right matt do you want to peer over anyone's shoulder and see mark okay we'll go over mark or liam's shoulder and see what's happening as well mark. okay so there was a post this morning that came up that was called, sorry, it just all those up there, should be on the shared screen at the moment. It's called Creating Descriptive PowerPoints, uh, work group with uh, sorry, descriptive paragraph PowerPoint work group. All right, I'll just come out of the room so Mr. Jeffrey can keep going and just explain what that is. So one of the things um, that has occurred in this time is obviously a move to online learning online teaching as well um I'll just peer through here mr reese mr reese is currently in here with some other year six boys as well mr reese is japanese specialist and also teaches science in year six too um one of the things that we've moved with very quickly at the end of last term um we realized where we were going and it was likely to be online learning for all boys with everyone at home teachers and students and parents. Um, we moved swiftly, we were able to provide every single boy in the junior school for prep to year six with a device. Um, the boys in years four, five, six, uh, sorry, and year three already had their own school provided laptops, but we pushed that right through to prep. Um, then with the announcements from the Premier during the holidays, it meant we had a bit of a mixture of an approach. Some children at school, um, dominant number at home, and online teaching is the only model being offered. So that's what you're seeing in class. Uh, the advantage of that is what will go beyond this time, we're already very clear on. There are some skills and things that we have learned that we will be able to deliver once school is back to normal eventually. Um, all sorts of wonderful things. All right, you're in the junior school hall. Um, not fascinating in itself, but it's what we use this venue for in normal circumstances. So assemblies, obviously, musicals, music concerts, parent functions, cooking for French, cooking, cooking for Japanese. Um, PE sometimes for our youngest boys on really hot or really cold days and one that I just absolutely love within our clubs and activities program junior master chef so the boys dress up in aprons and chef's hats uh, they take a recipe they cook and they eat or they're critiqued sometimes by some of our teachers and very well received and that's a program that's available to, to all boys in our school um, we're not running it at the moment with the current restrictions, but we're looking forward to reintroducing that when we're allowed to. Right, I'll, I'll just get Matt to show you the view along our playground. So you can see right through, there is a golf buggy down there. That's not normally in the playground, but we will be in that shortly. And what you can see is the junior school. Um, I guess the trees that dominate around our site. Um, the, the PB Hawser Aquatic Centre that we've been in, and then up beyond that is St Vincent's Hospital. So the highest building is in fact not part of our school, but there are ovals in between St Vincent's and our school. All right, has anyone got any questions at this stage? All right, 
one of the things, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you have a look at this, one of the things that's happening with our, I guess, regulations and requirements and our risk assessment is regular cleaning of surfaces on multiple occasions throughout the day. So a squad of cleaners who'd come in and do a wonderful job, railings, playground equipment, um, you name it, are making sure we're very hygienic in our current climate. So a good thing probably for you to be seeing. It wasn't scheduled though. Um, all right, we're about to come into one of our music rooms, so the music studio with Mrs. Dixon. All right, morning, boys. Okay, sit back down. Put up your head if you can tell me what you're in the middle of at the moment. Oh, and sorry, hang on a second, guys. Go and make sure I get that right as well. Good morning, boys. Oh, <laughs> good, good morning, boys. Okay, good morning, Jack. Okay, nice to see you out there. Clever Cook, I don't think I've said hello to you. I said hello to Ben earlier in the week, your little brother. So, hope things are going well. Boys, I'm just doing an online tour. Um, and I'm just going to talk to the boys just for a moment. And then I'll give you back to Mrs. Dixon as well. All right. Thanks, Cooper. Hands up. Great. Boys, put up your hand if you can tell me what you're doing with Mrs. Dixon at the moment. <laughs> Bye, boys. You can swing around if that's more comfortable. Okay, Bo, what's happening? And some assessment, online assessment. Okay. All right, so getting started, doing it on the screen, which makes sense. And then, for, so for parents and children, so this is a music lesson. Mrs. Dixon's our head of junior school music. Um, and they're working through a year five music lesson. And then into an assessment piece. Okay, which is interesting in itself, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so just so I get a quick take before, the boys have seen me do this before, but not online. Um, music room, every boy in our school has a music lesson each week. Every boy at our school plays sport, but not in here. Every boy at our school sings in a choir, which we know is voice work. So it's like another team activity. Um, Mrs. Dixon runs the whole music program here and has multiple staff who work with her as well. And the ensemble programs, um, big part of our school, but to get into an instrumental ensemble, you got to begin. So year two is a strings program. Uh, that's a violin, viola, cello, or double bass school instrument, school tuition in school time. And then the second part is in year four, uh, woodwind, brass, or percussion. Put up your hand if you played one of those instruments last year. So not everyone was here last year. So Louis, you're new this year. All right, hands down. Put up your hand if you're still playing a woodwind, brass, or percussion instrument. Okay, this is good to see, isn't it? There we go. All right, so thanks, boys. Hands down. So one of the things that we celebrate at our school, 280 boys, probably about 180 play instruments, Mrs. Dixon, which is wonderful. All right, so, okay, I have a question from Elaine about class sizes, all right, which I'll do outside as well. Boys, have a great day. Thanks, Holly. All right, good, good morning, boys, bye. All right, swing back around to Mrs. Dixon, thanks. All right, a question about class sizes uh, from, Someone out there by the name of Elaine. So good morning, Elaine. Um, yeah, great question. Um, one of the things we do not have composite classes. Our classes are structured where they move up incrementally. So prep, the ceiling is 20. Um, but I should be um, yeah, articulate what you need to know. In Toowoomba, we have people who come to Toowoomba and then move out of Toowoomba as their careers progress, possibly. All sorts of reasons. Um, so it's a little bit fluid. Um, the, the boys who are in prep, uh, might we have 17 in the class. If we get to over the 20 mark, then we'll split and create two classes. So on average in the prep class, um, in the mid-teens would be an average figure um, with two classes, um, 17, as I said this year. Uh, the ceiling in year one is 22. We have two year one classes. They're both on 14 at the moment. So while the ceiling's one thing, the reality is different. Um, and then if I pushed up to uh, year four, it's probably a great illustration. I can't, sorry, we'll look at the as well. Um, our current year four boys, last year there were two year three classes on about 22, 23, um, increased enrolments, and we moved to three classes in year four, and each of those classes are on either 17 or 18. Um, so we only have at this stage one year level um, that is at capacity. Um, but the class ceiling from year two upwards is technically 25. We would not go past that mark. Um, and you'll get a bit of a take as we go in. Uh, well, actually you won't because we don't have all our children here. My mistake. All right, this is the art and woodwork room. It is one of the most popular rooms in the school for our boys. 
by Miss Fraser. <laughs> and this is Pratt. And good morning, boys. Oh, cool. You better come and have a look at this, Matt. Much more interesting than my face. All right, so these are boys in one of our year one classes. Miss Fraser is the teacher, so she's teaching online. And Mrs. Pratt is a multi skilled teacher aide, works in the library, works with sport, is working in art and youth work at the moment. All right, what this room looks like is art on the side that you're seeing on the screen at the moment. And then over on the side, then over this side is woodwork. And the boys move between programs, so art projects and woodwork projects. With our online world, one of the, um, one of the things we've done is click and collect. So collect the woodwork project, take it home, and then work with it online. Um, an art club and a woodwork club after school exist in this room. So I've obviously walked in the middle of a lesson, which is obviously tricky when you're doing it online, but creative space, a wonderful space, very popular with the boys. And I'll tell you a little bit more when I move outside. All right, everything you're seeing today is available from prep to year six. And that's an important message. Um, having worked in number of other schools like this in Sydney. One of the things that sometimes happens is woodwork might only be introduced in year five, or you can only do certain things from year three upwards. And adamant that every boy is, has access to every program we offer. And what that means before we go into the library, um, class teachers take the boys for maths, English, science, history, geography, and using technology within those subjects. Um, for parents who are in Queensland, HASS, um, being the humanities that has different acronyms in different states. And then the boys would see possibly five, maybe six other teachers during the week. So art and woodwork, music upstairs, French and Japanese, um, library where we're going into in a moment, PE and health. And then also for some of the boys, um, extension programs and support programs. So all junior school teachers in our junior school um, with you know, wonderful capacity to deliver. Right, we're coming into the library. We very deliberately call it library. We don't give it some other fancy title. It's a place you come to borrow books. And yes, we have books. We don't. We have not moved into an online world for books. You are allowed to read the physical hard copy. Right, what you can see in here is Miss Worthington, and she is teaching some boys in year two at the moment, and. What they're working on is a quiz, which I can see up on the screen, in response to a book that Miss Worthington may have read to the boys, or that they may have read as well. Okay, um, I'm just getting um, a tip here, which is a technical one. Parents can ask their questions via email or chat, and then they'll be relayed relay to me as well. So welcome to do that. All right, this is the part of the tour where I could trap you for an hour or probably a whole day as I get onto a roll about boys and reading and what that does for them. I won't, I promise, but to give you a snapshot. Um, my memory of primary school is if I went in, so this is in Sydney in a state school in Sydney. Um, I had a good experience there, but I have a very, two very strong memories of the library. You went in at lunchtime and you talked, you got yelled at and you got kicked out. Um, the second part of the experience was they brought the books back and they locked them up in the school holidays. Um, I'm an avid reader. I was from a very young age, and I used to be traumatised by that. So, Miss Worthington over there um, is one of those unique librarians in Australia. There are very few of them. Um, she has, up until about a year ago, been the Children's Book Council of Australia book judge um, in the middle readers category. And there are only three in each category across Australia. Um, so judging those books that for parents, you would have seen those stickers on the shortlisted books and the prize winning books that are announced in book week. What that means is that she practices what she preaches, literally reads hundreds of books a year, recommends them to staff, to staff as parents of children, um, or boys particularly, um, and obviously to the boys. So parents can drop in here and get advice from a Children's Book Council of Australia book judge about what to read. Awesome. 
Libraries after lunchtime, you come in here and talk. You do not get moved on. You do not get yelled at, absolutely. And the glorious part, you can borrow for the holidays. You can bring your sports bag in and you can borrow 20 or 30 books for the holidays if you want. And Michelle has also had the library open the Christmas holidays one day a week. So we practice what we preach, promote reading, promote the joy of reading, promote the love of visiting the library and promote that if you do those things and you do them well, it makes you powerful for life. More truly, and it helps you negotiate school wonderfully well. Right. I'm just going to move into a part that's off from the library, which is called the Maker Space. And you can see some signage there as well. Morning, Mr. Willowcott. Morning, boys. Sorry. All right, I'll let Matt get footage, but I'll just move away from some of the noise there. So, that's right. Matt, if you want to keep filming there and I'll just talk from over here, I'll go. Okay. Um, right, to make a space implies you make things with technology in this space. So it used to be two computer rooms, but an open space now. And if you thought as a parent and for the children, there, robotics, coding, um, you can see the boys who are here are using the Spiros and iPads to control them. So they're like mini Star Wars robots that you need to code to work. And Mr. Woolacott, who's dressed as a scientist at the moment, um, one of our year six teachers, and so the boys in his class, he is on an interactive touch screen in the makerspace, talking to his class and working with them at the moment. And if you look at the screen, you can see initials there or, or icons for the boys. Um, and you can see him loading things up. We have had programs here where we've worked with um, Fair Home College, a combined program with Year 4. Our boys working here, Fair Home girls working at Fair Home, and doing a robotics program, and then bringing those children physically together. So a great space for the boys. Our coding clubs run out of here after school as well, and we'd like to think the advantages we give our boys will take them way beyond school in the future. Right, and you can see the complexity for teachers to teaching online and also teaching the boys who are here and working with that. Right, we'll just move out because I can hear boys asking questions to Mr. Woolacott in there. All right, quick take on there. If you want to teach at our school, you need or you have to want to teach boys. Um, Mr. Woolacott's a great example there. Um, he dresses up uh, for some of his lessons. So I have seen him dressed as Einstein with a wig. And other times he's in other characters and he goes at a nice fast pace. Um, question, response, question, response, moving on and really engages the boys. And I guess that's the secret to teaching boys. Keep them engaged, keep them interested, um, keep them focused, but also allow them to move and you have much better outcome. All right, so I've got a question from Lisa, which is how many teacher aides and what's the spread like in the junior school? So a great question, Lisa. Thank you and good morning. All right, we have full-time teacher aide with the prep class or prep classes, depending if we've got one or two. Um, and then we have teacher aides with year one, year two, year three, and they are three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and either on single class or shared, we've got two classes. You've seen Mrs. Pratt who does a number of things. She was in the library, so library aide, but also assisting with the boys who are here at school during online learning. And you also um, probably saw a young lady with Mr. Woolacott's um, class, uh, Maddie Payne. So she's a teacher aide who works um, part-time here in a couple of capacities, including um, some individual boys who receive some extra support. Um, and that gives us, I think, seven teacher aides spread across uh, from prep year three plus library plus additional support. Um, all right, we're about to come into the prep classroom. This is Grill's classroom. And hello, Mrs. Grills. Ah, oh, James Moffat. Hello, James. Oh, he's gone. Hi, James. I can see half of your head. Yes, hello. How are you going out there? Good. All right. Oh, you're sharing some work, are you, James? And I can see Peter Donovan out there. Hello, Peter. Good morning. James, very nice. Mrs. Grills, what am I looking at? What's what's the task? Yep. 
like the visual of the chapter guys Okay, so word of the week, cheer, and then they're working with that. So James is at home, and he has an older brother at our school, the senior school, and a sister as well. James, is your sister at Fair Home? Is that right? Yes, okay, yep. All right, and then on the screen, you can see a number of other boys. So Peter down the bottom, some initials there. And then you can see a number of boys. Try not to eat that, Cooper. It probably doesn't taste that great. Yes. Yeah. No, it's, yep. All right. And the boys who are sitting here are the boys who are at school. Um, and you can see prep uniform is different from the rest. But working with an online lesson plus the boys here at school. Um, and we were really pleased when the social distance, well, for the health reasons, obviously, but social distancing um, rules around what happens in classrooms um, being relaxed. It's not an impossible, yeah, as Mrs. Grills is laughing with this one, not an impossible if you're a three, four, five-year-old, you know, a daycare kindy setting even harder. But anyway, boys, I hope you're having a good day. Hello, Sid. Good morning, Sid. Good morning. All right. Hello, Will. How are you? All right. Mrs. Grills, thank you. That's lovely. I know Zach's been at school and he's at home now. Yeah. All right. And boys, I think I'm coming back to say hello a little bit later this morning or today as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> See ya. All right, as I mentioned, the, the boys in prep have access to all the programs we do um, and are very much intrinsically involved in our school. And we're going to get into this lovely golf buggy and go for a drive. And while we're doing that, I'm going to try and do two things at once. And I hope you all appreciate how difficult that is for most males. There we go. All right, in terms of our offerings, I haven't talked about sport. And I deliberately haven't until this point in time because in an all boys school, you take sport as a given, but not every boy necessarily um, lives for sport, but it is an important part of our school. And being physically active um, is a healthy thing. Being involved in team sports, really good for your character development. Um, but like with all our other programs, so playing a musical instrument, singing in a choir, doing art, so on, you don't know what you like and you don't know what you're good at unless you've given the chance to have a go. And that's the way sport is approached too. Um, how do you know if you enjoy cricket or if you're good at it? You only know if you're given the chance to play. So in our school, um, we encompass 15 or 16 key sports, um, summer, winter, indoor and outdoor. And it is a, a big part of our school and important. All right, we're just going through we're behind the junior boarding house, that's years five to year seven, and a lower building, which is off to my left, which is the second music room and also the languages room, so French and Japanese talking there. Uh, the junior boarding house, um, sort of over to my right, um, encompasses, I think, a maximum of 50 students um, who, who can board there, and you know, from year five to year seven, and a, a significant renovation to that building recently. Any more questions, Mrs. Charles? All right, we're just going to carefully negotiate the road that is inside the school. And the view that you can see out there is Mills Oval. So if you've had a look on our website or you visited previously, um, one of the glories of our school is the green space. The Mills Oval is the first 11 cricket oval. It's used for football, as in soccer, and rugby as well. Um, and you can see that the centre wicket has a sign on at the moment, um, as they're, they're doing a little bit of seeding, I believe. Uh, white picket fence with no advertising, which I just love. For our older boys, year four, year five, year six, they can come and play on Mills and through the Jacaranda Glade, so right through this area. Um, oops, we're going, all right. Um, and one of the things that is a glory at our school is you can take your shoes and socks off to play on that oval at lunchtime with older boys. And they just love that. 
and you can see a, a bit more of what happens through here. So um, Mills Oval, Barber Oval, past it, Old Boys Memorial Oval, which you'll see shortly, Kenton Trustees up the top um, above the junior school in the aquatic centre, and a smaller one called PNF. So a huge amount of green space, turf pitches, um, glorious grass, great place for children um, with the boys. Uh, there's a building that Matt just showed you, which is the pavilion. So two rooms in there and for all sorts of things. Um, but for functions for parents, wonderful views over the ovals. Uh, PNF meeting there as well, um, but a range of school groups too. We want to walk up there. Okay, sorry, I'm getting some producer and director <laughs> directions as well. So we're just going through for a walk up and then you'll we'll circle around and get to schoolhouse which is very much history and tradition in our school. For the clubs and activities program, I probably haven't mentioned quite enough of that at the moment. Uh, one of the things that is a, an extra in our school, which is part of um, parents' fees, is clubs, activities, um, the structure before and after school. So that can be, we we'll probably have 10 different instrumental ensembles that rehearse before and after school. Um, two choirs, the, the year level choirs are in school time. And then other clubs include, as I mentioned, Junior Masterchef, Chess Club, Senior and Junior. Um, we have a homework club that runs five after, sorry, four afternoons of the week, supervised by a teacher. So particularly popular for our old boys and parents as they try and negotiate uh, the week. Um, and those are advertised, promoted, and the boys and parents sign up for them. Um, this year we've introduced, I'm not running at the moment in the current climate, but a reading club. So you could liken that to reading tutoring. And as I said, walk, walk the talk. Um, I take one of those clubs and make sure that we're doing our very best to promote reading and get boys to a, a great level with their reading. All right, this old boys memorial oval, you can see, in the background, which is, I guess, described as the main oval in the school. And it's where big matches are played, but you could also imagine, um, in normal circumstances, you could see prep boys or year one boys out there um, playing, doing PE lessons or sport as well. Um, wonderful area and space. Um, tennis courts over past Woodford Sheds on that side, more cricket nets as well. And we'll just wander around till we get a view of schoolhouse as well. So the terraces we're on at the moment, um, at the end of the year, the junior school always finishes with something called twilight concert. So out on the oval, a stage is set, every class puts on, um, we call it fast paced action, dancing to music, a live performance. It's done as the sun is setting. Typically we'd get anything up to 1500 people here. Uh, picnic blankets down, you can order pre-order pizzas as parents. It's a fantastic way to finish the school year. All right, over, over and behind me. So schoolhouse, so the history and tradition of our school. So this block of land and this building in 1875 and schoolhouse originally had 44 boys in it. Um, the headmaster of the time lived in there as well. At the moment, we have staff officers in there. Uh, so the headmaster, Mr. Hawser, um, deputy headmaster, Mr. Anderson, um, and so on. Um, but a wonderful building. And I won't show you an old hall today, but you get the sense of history and tradition through our school. And I guess where I'd probably be finishing before I, I respond to any questions, um, is threefold. Firstly, doing this in this environment, I'm really pleased that we'll come along and visit online. Um, I'd love to be able to show parents around and the children um, and see the, the school in action physically at some stage. Um, so we're hoping for those opportunities again, hopefully sooner rather than later. All right, the second part, what do we celebrate? We celebrate whatever boys are engaged with, with what they want to do and what they enjoy doing. And we proudly do that, well and truly. We're the only all boys school in our region from prep to year 12, and the only GPS school in our region as well. So the other eight um, 
mostly in Brisbane, one in Ipswich and one on the Gold Coast as well. Um, an important thing for, for parents to be aware of as well. And the final part uh, from me before I'm going to questions is, um, if you've got any follow-up as well, Mr Foley, our Director of Enrolments and Development, uh, and Mrs Charles, who is his um, PA, would be more than happy to book in individual times and work with you. Right, now I have a question. I have a phone call now. <laughs> um, so I was getting a question, but I don't have my glasses on, Mrs Charles, so I can't read that little writing. And just bear with me, parents, while I get the question that's come our way. Do with languages. Japanese. Okay, so the question. Uh, okay, so questions about languages. So Japanese and French are the two languages. They go from prep through to year 12, but we don't offer any other languages at this stage other than English. Don't forget that one. Um, but that is something that I guess would possibly in the future maybe reviewed or added to. But at this stage, Japanese and French are the two. And they run from prep to year six, and then obviously from year seven upwards as well. All right. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge Matthew, who's been holding a camera and doing this, and is the second one today, senior school earlier today. Mrs. Charles is in the background. And um, then I guess, you know, Kate Canaveral somewhere in the back as well with Mrs Silver and Mrs Anderson. So a lot of work has been done to get us to this stage, which I just love, and the advantage of what we've had to do online. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and for the children out there, the boys, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that today. I hope you found it informative, and I'd be more than happy to connect with people via Teams, online, Zoom, um, on the phone, and have a chat further um, if you'd like to follow up. And as I said, you're welcome the chance to show you around in the physical environment um, or the real world as well. Anyway, take care, stay healthy and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there as well. Thank you.